my name is Brittany and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys, in today's video, I'm going to finally share a do a week with us of the IEW Structure and Style Level 1A. So you guys, if any of you are new here to my channel, I'm Brittany, I'm a homeschooling mom to three girls and I'm in my third year of homeschool. I have a fifth grader, I have a pre k and I have a two year old that's kind of like just in the mix. <laughs> so you guys, um, I'm so excited about today's video because I don't think I've seen another video on YouTube where a parent has gone in depth showing how a full week of IEW actually works, the full process and how it's really implemented in like our homeschool. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you how I utilize IEW Structure and Style Level 1A. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to incorporate it in your homeschool, especially since the writing pressure and instruction is really taken off of me as a parent because my daughter is actually watching all of the video lessons through Andrew Pudawa. It is really giving her the confidence as a writer to build up her skills and it's giving me the confidence as mom to really help me guide her along in her writing instruction. You guys, especially since writing is not like my strong suit. So you guys, I'm going to stop rambling and I'm going to take you guys along with me as we show you how we do a week of IEW structure and style. Okay, you guys, before we actually get into the week of IEW, I kind of just want to show you where we're at and the specific checklist that we are going to be doing each day for this week of IEW. So uh, for IEW, we are actually on week 10, which the keyword outlines is going to be on desert reptiles. So our goal for this week is for Brielle to practice the unit four structure model uh, where she's going to be practicing uh, summarizing references. She's going to be writing a keyword outline. She's going to be learning new vocabulary. The vocabulary word she's going to be learning is nocturnal, hibernate, and pit viper. And she's also going to be writing a three paragraph paper about desert reptiles. So this right here is actually my guide that is going to break down what we're going to be doing for day one two, three, and day four and five. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the source text that we're gonna be using this week, which is going to be uh, the Sand Viper source text. She's going to be using this a rattlesnake uh, source text, and then the gray monitor source text. And at the end of the week, it actually has my composition checklist, which I'm going to be using as parent to uh, grade her writing and make sure that she is able to follow along with all of the styles that Andrew Pudawa is going to be teaching this week in uh, the video lessons. So you guys, um, let's go ahead and get into IEW day one. Okay, you guys, we are actually about to start off our IEW week. We are on IEW week number 10, day number one. So Brielle has to start off by watching the video by Andrew Pudawa. So we already looked at the video for week 10 and today's video is about 43 minutes long, which is pretty long. However, she is, you know, in upper elementary, she does have the stamina to watch a longer video. So she is going to watch this video. She's going to start off on her keyword outline and I am going to run back downstairs with my two younger ones and work a little bit with them one-on-one -on -one while Brielle is doing her IEW. So let me go ahead and go and we are going to show you guys day one of IEW week 10. the end of day one this is Brielle's keyword outline that she did and then this is her source text that she highlighted from watching the video with Andrew Pudua. So Brie what did you learn today? Uh, I learned about the Sahara Sand Piper. No about the structure and style of writing what did he talk about? Uh, in the unit four? Mm -hmm. Yeah what did he talk about? He talked about the he talked more about reports mm -hmm. and how to use important and interesting facts and to only outline, um, to only underline six facts. 
X and to use a clincher sentence. And your clincher sentence. Okay. So you guys, this actually completes day one of the structure and style. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, you guys, it is day two of IEW week number 10. So we are going to be watching part two of the video and Brielle is going to be finishing her keyword outline. So, um, how many minutes this video was? So in total, this minute, this video was 55 minutes. So she's starting at the minutes of 43. So she's only going to be watching a video today for only 10 minutes. And then the rest of the time she's working on her keyword outline. So today is probably going to be the shortest day for IEW for her. And then the next two days, you're going to just watch Brielle work on her uh, paper for the IEW um, week that she had to do. And this week again, let me see, what were their styles she was learning again? She's gonna be doing who, which claws and topic clinchers. Or what is it called again, Brie? Topic and, um, topic sentence and clincher sentence. Topic sentence and clincher sentences is what she's gonna be working on. So, I'm gonna go ahead and let Brielle watch her video and finish up her keyword outline. And again, I'm gonna go downstairs and work with my younger two. Okay, you guys, Brielle is all done with day number two for our checklist for week number 10. So in day number two, we had to finish watching the video and she had to write two keyword outlines, which you saw her already do. So here, let me go in the binder because she actually already has it all nice and organized. So here is the part that has her source text. So these are the two source texts or the source text that she used from yesterday. And this is the source text that she used today. These final two that she made her keyword outline. So I'm going to go into work in progress. And this has her keyword outline that she is going to be using to write her own paragraphs. And I believe this week she's going to be writing three paragraphs. This is her keyword outlines from yesterday. We will see you guys back tomorrow tomorrow when Brielle starts her first rough draft of her composition for um, the Desert Reptiles. Okay, you guys, we are actually on IEW day number three where Brielle is getting the opportunity to start her rough draft of her IEW paper. The two papers you see in front of Brielle is her LY adverb list and her band verbs that she can't use in her paper. Um, you guys, I really enjoyed watching this process of Brielle actually writing her papers because I typically don't see this process because I allow her the space in our homeschool room to really uh, focus on her writing. Um, I try my best not to uh, interrupt while she is getting all of her thoughts out on paper. That is so important to me in my homeschool. So you guys, one of the most common questions I get about IEW is how long Brielle actually works on writing each day. And at this level, Brielle is working on her IEW writing anywhere between 30 and 45 minutes long each day. Um, the longer days are definitely the uh, earlier earlier days where she is watching the video, but days like this, she typically will sit in the homeschool room for about maybe 30 minutes to work on her paper and to go ahead and type her rough draft. So after Brielle types her rough draft, she is done for today and we will check her paper the next day. Okay, you guys, we are actually on IEW week 10, day number four. So it kind of was a wonky week for us last week. So it's now Monday and we're just finishing off week 10 of IEW, which is perfectly fine. We're having a shorter week this week. So we're actually not going to be doing IEW, like starting a new week this week. So it's okay that last week kind of rolled over into Monday. So you guys, uh, you already see me print off Brielle's uh, rough draft. So here is the first page of her rough draft. And then here is the second page of it. So the minimum requirements for this composition checklist for week 10, her paper had to be a minimum of three paragraphs. She did a little bit more, which is perfectly fine. As far as the structure of her paragraph and the styles, this right here is my checklist that I'm going to be using for this week to look over Brielle's paper.
paper and I love like how these composition checklists that IEW has for us how it's laid out so uh, perfectly well so I can really just look at her paper check off and make sure she met the requirements for this particular paper so as far as the particular styles in this uh, week's paper she had to make sure she used her ly adverbs and those are these adverbs that are right here on this list that you seen brielle refer to when she was writing her rough draft and then also too she has some banned words that she can't use so right now the banned words that she can't use is said say see saw think thought go went so those are all the words she can't use so during the videos andrew putawa gave the kiddos a list of other words that they can replace their band words with so uh it's really cool seeing how uh better and stronger her paper does sound when she can't use these uh basic verbs so i'm gonna go ahead while brielle is still practicing her piano and i'm gonna read over her paper just double check and see if she met all the guidelines and after she gets done with piano I'm going to bring her in. We're going to check her uh, work and we will be done with this IEW week 10. But surely the Sahara van, but I want you to fix that. So what, yeah, I need help with that one. What did you want to say? You want to say berry? No, bear, like they give birth. Okay. Um, That's what they said in the check. They said bear, like give birth. Okay, but surely the sandpiper does. Okay, well, oh, okay, well, if that's what you're saying, then I'm going to leave that the way it is. What I want you to do is I want you to go down here and I want you to go ahead and fix oh, right there. Yeah, so condense that part right here in your paper. So you guys, this is a little glimpse of our editing process that I go through uh, Brielle's paper. I try my best while I am editing her work to allow her still to use her voice and just assist her in her writing, not necessarily replace my voice with her voice in her writing. So we typically go through this process. Sometimes we may go through it in a day and sometimes we may take two days to go through this editing process of her paper until she is happy with her final results. Unlike like other snakes, the Sahara sand viper is very unusual. It is pale, it, it is pale colored with dark markings and a triangle shaped head. Strangely, it buries its body under the sand. It does this to keep cool from the hot temperatures and also to secretly hunt its prey. The Sahara sand viper uses its tail to trick its prey to thinking that it's food. Jumping sideways, these snakes move around differently because of the steep terrains in the sand. Most snakes don't bear live young, but surely the, sand, the Sahara sand viper does. These unusual snakes have, big dis, have a big disparity between a regular garden snake. The Mojave rattlesnake, which can be very dangerous, defeats anything that gets in its way. Its fangs can inject a powerful venom that can kill an animal in seconds. Matter of fact, its venom is stronger than any snake in North America. The Mojave rattlesnake can be can be various colors such as tan, olive, gray brown, and gray brown. On the end of its tail is a rattle, and every year the rattle increases size. <clears throat> every time it sheds, a new sex, a new section forms on its tail. This viper is a pit viper because it has two pits on its face to locate body heat. This dangerous rattlesnake luckily cannot hurt you, but if you find one, stay back. Gray's monitor lizard devours almost everything it finds. Its tongue helps it smell prey. It has venom in its saliva and strong jaws. This lizard doesn't usually doesn't have a very balanced diet. It eats other lizards, snakes, ground nest birds, and so on. The Gray's monitor lizard usually is solitary and likes to be alone. These lizards have been pets, but they calmly, but they commonly can't be tamed. Some of them are known to be, are known to violently bite their owners from being in captivity. Gray's monitor lizard devours animal and devours animals and is greedy, such and like a lizard. Good job, Bree. Good job. I love it. Give me five. Bam, girl. Yeah. Okay, you guys. And just like that, we have finished another week of IEW structure and style. So you guys, the last thing that I do is I will go ahead and print off one more final copy of her work. 
I will put the uh, rough draft that we worked on together, her actual rough draft that she written, and then in the back I have the checklist from the IEW structure and style. And I will staple this all together and I will put it inside of her final composition. Just because if I do wanna use some of these samples for like her homeschooling records, I can just pull one of the weeks off and put this whole uh, weeks inside of her record keeper binder. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. But for now, I am just storing all of her weeks back in her IEW in the finished composition tab. So you guys, I really hope you enjoy like hearing uh, Brielle actually read one of her papers to you guys. Um, I'm so happy she was actually willing to do this uh, in today's video. And hopefully it can kind of like give you an example of how a fifth grader's work might sound. Um, but you guys, uh, thank you so much for watching today's video. I am loving you guys coming inside of my homeschool and seeing like more in depth views of how we are actually utilizing our curriculum in our homeschool. So you guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. And as always, I look forward to seeing everybody in my next one. Bye.